Welcome to episode 151 of the Confidence Through Health podcast. In this episode, I interview Dr. Nayan Patel. He is the author of The Glutathione Revolution, Fight Disease, Slow Aging, and Increase Energy with the Master Antioxidant. So if you don't know or haven't heard of glutathione, we talk about that in this episode. And he shares not just what it is, it's, it's naturally occurring in our body. Uh, but it slowly decreases over time as we age. And so how do we combat that? Because it's something we need. So we talk about that. We talk about the importance of it. We talk about how it's used, how we feel it, how you feel the effects of it. Um, and and we dig into more about just how to live a healthy life and, and optimize you know, the, the stress reducers, optimize the antioxidants out there, um, and and really get as he says the beauty from the inside out how do we how do we transform our body from the inside out using the tools that are available some of them pharmaceuticals and some of them uh and not not drugs medicine necessarily but pharmaceuticals in the way of of antioxidants and and things that are naturally occurring in our body that we just need a boost of um how do we get there and, and he talks about that he shares so much it was a great conversation about how the body works how we need to uh, look at ourselves from an aging standpoint. And so how are we going to continue to live a life that we want to live long after we think we should be giving up or that uh, the statistics show um, that we're not going to be around because of what statistics say is the longevity of the, you know, the average American or the average person in your country around the world. Um, how do we how do we go above and beyond that? And so we talk a lot about that as well. Um, great conversation, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. And um, so look in the show notes for connections to how to connect with him and get to his website and find out more about glutathione and how to use it in your life to improve your life. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel, for being a guest on the Confidence to Health podcast. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here today. So really want to get into uh really like what you wrote your book about and and what you've you know really got a i think a passion for um which is glutathione and 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 explain to my listeners what all that is but before that like give us a little background about who you are and and why you decided to go into this area absolutely so um um I'm a pharmacist by trade, um, okay. and that's but that's not who I am. Uh, as as deep down, who I am is 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 my passion is in education, learning as well as educating others, and that's been my passion, and that's a passion driven company that I run, and it's mm-hmm. all up, all geared towards education. And when you try to educate others, uh, you I try to educate uh, things that I do know, which is mostly about pharmacy. Right. And so, as a pharmacist, the biggest my biggest question has always been: Is there something? Is there a one or two things that is so profound that can change everybody's lives? Right. And uh, after all this, I mean, we have thousands and thousands of medications in the world. We have thousands and thousands of chemicals in our body. Right. Uh, but the most abundant molecule that our body produces is glutathione. And hence, my research has been on glutathione because if I can master this one ingredient or mm-hmm. one molecule and know everything about it, I think there's a good chance that I can affect each and every individuals on this planet today. So, so as a pharmacist, you come to it a little differently than maybe a, a, a doctor would, or, or even a researcher, right? Because you're like you're seeing people come in to the pharmacy and like, okay, I'm taking this medication. What are my side effects? What are this? What is that? You know, and you're the one that's a lot of times getting to have that time with the the patient, really, because a lot of times it's a doctor just says, "Oh, here." I don't have time. Here's the script here, you know, go maybe talk to the nurse, but really it's like, okay, the doctor prescribed this. Why? What is it doing? What is it for? What is it? Right. Am I right? Absolutely. And the yeah. thing is the doctors, this is their way of telling the patients, your time is up mm-hmm. and I'm going to give you something because uh, I know I don't have an answer for all your problems right now, but this would, let's keep you shut up for a few, few days or a few months or a few years, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. And so yeah. I see prescriptions as uh as something that given to the patients to go out and say, hey, take this thing and something will happen to you, right? Right. 
patients have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Uh, and I see prescriptions from thousands of doctors at my pharmacy. I still run, I still run a pharmacy, so I, mm-hmm. I work there once in a while. Uh, I do see prescriptions all the time, and what I do see is 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 what because it's a it's a patch job. Right. Uh, we have a symptoms that the patients are coming into us, and the doctors are telling you to get rid of those symptoms, but actually never going to the root cause of the problem. Of all the medications that prescribe to the patients that they fill at the pharmacy on an everyday basis. Uh, nothing is actually help helping them to heal. Right, is getting rid of the problem, but that doesn't mean the problem is going to not going to come back again. Right, and yeah. So it's, it's managing the symptoms. This, yeah, it's managing the symptoms. We just we just are the superficial of it because to get deep into the root cause of the problem, you you can't just spend ten minutes and find out what what the root cause is. Right, right, right. So. Uh, well, and so that leads us back to glutathione. And you, you mentioned that it's it's the most common molecule in the body. Um, uh, and so, like, it, obviously, it's something we produce ourselves. Yes, we do. But Plenty. we might not produce enough. Uh, we do produce enough. It's, okay. it's just that our needs uh, never reduces. Okay. And when our needs never reduces... Eventually, the body is going to not have the ability to produce all the time as we get older, right. because it requires to produce glutathione. You need three amino acids: the glutamine, glycine, and cysteine. Okay, you need two enzymes uh, and a catalyst like selenium to put all these three pieces together in a sequence to make a molecule of glutathione. It's a simple molecule. I'm not asking you to body to produce a lot of growth hormone, which are 191 amino acid chains. This is three amino acid chains, three, right? Okay. It's a very simple molecule. Uh, and body does this very efficiently, produces all the time. It's when you get older, our diet does not have all the three substances that we're going to get. Our ability to produce those enzymes also reduces as we age. Right. But our needs, our demand never goes away. We want to do, even if I'm like, I'm 50 plus right now, I want to do everything I want to do at 20, yeah. right? We want yeah. to do everything as possible, right? We want to explore right. the world. We want to do, uh, we want to exercise every single day. We want to hike every day. We, we want to do things we want to do when we are young. And I want everybody to do the same thing. But a body doesn't have the capacity to keep on doing that and regenerating, regenerating itself all the time. Mm-hmm. And so the need of glutathione is there as sometimes it's supplementation. Sometimes it's just making sure that you write the, eat the proper food right. to get all, all your needs. Either way, we need the body will need help to, to improve the glutathione levels. So is there... Is is there like a, a a symptom that you can see happening, and you go, "Oh, I can see that I'm like I'm starting to not get enough glutathione, mate." Like, is there, or oh, is it just okay. sort of, is it is it you just have to get a lab test done to see where your levels are, or is it just a okay, I'm getting older, so I know it's happening. Um, all right, so <clears throat> there's no one symptom. Okay, so that, that's answer your first question. Uh, yes, there is a lab test. There's a second question. There's a lab test that you can do a glutathione test actually to find out what your levels are. Okay. Uh, but the most of the tests are have to be done in a in a at the time of uh, at the time of uh, poking the blood out. Mm-hmm. You need to be testing right at the same time, or okay. they usually freeze the the blood uh, and send frozen samples out to the to the labs to test it. Okay. Otherwise, the blood, uh, once you take the blood out, it will oxidize the glutathione in uh, in, a, in a vial. And so what you're really measuring is just an oxidized level of glutathione, which is not the true level. So right. uh, in the laboratory testing, because I do work at a couple of universities, and so we have done some testings over there. And so far, everybody that we have tested above the age of 30 have compromised glutathione levels. When okay. I say compromise, that means they're not they're not optimal for sure. Uh, they are on the low normal side to low side, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's what we have we have seen again of of the page, the number of people that we have tested is not thousands and thousands. So it's not uh, something that we uh, we can tell that everybody's going to have the same issue. Right. Uh, but the but if you think about uh, oxidative stress, 
your your exposure to chemicals, toxins, sun lay, uh, sun rays, or 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 chemical process that happens in your body, it happens every single day. Right. That's not going to go away. So the need of glutathione is every it's is there every single day. It's never going to go away. But the issue is we can see that we are aging. Some people faster than slower. Sure. Uh, we, we see that we are aging. We see the body is not functioning at the full capacity as we age. Something is something is there to give. Every, as every year you you go from 50 to 51, something has to give, right? And so right. we see that the, our body is aging. A metabolic disorders, we, we call them as... Uh, you can talk about weight weight issues or liver functions or diabetes or blood pressure, right. all those things. We don't get when we are 10 and 20 or 30 years old, right? We start getting them when you're 40, 40, 45, 50, 60. Uh, it's the age of onset of diseases at the, at the later age because the levels of toxins in the body starts rising because right. the body's ability to get rid of it decreases as we age because the, it needs glutathione to do that part. And it's, that's, the, that's not the only thing, but it's one of the major things sure. it requires to, to, to get rid of it. And if it does not do that, it starts accumulating. And over time, the accumulation of all this known Toxins. I call them toxins because it's such a bad word. Because people always think toxin is like something like like a sewer system is really right. really bad for you. Yeah. Uh, but toxins are. It could be a. It could be just an electrons. Mm -hmm. It's just electrons wandering around because because when you have chemical reactions happening in your body all the time, they are byproducts right. that are not useful to the human human body. They're not bad. But they're not useful anymore, so they're called, they're considered toxins because they're not right. useful to us anymore, right. right? And those have to be out of the body as fast as possible because that eventually those can give us some some issues in in, in the future. So all this accumulations it's it's increasing in our body as we age, and so we want to we want to get rid of it. And the right. first thing that the very first thing people notice is the level of energy. Okay. Because when the when the glutathione levels are optimized, the very first thing they will notice is that hey, you know what? I feel good. I feel energized. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is coming from. Maybe I just had enough coffee today. I don't. I don't know. They couldn't figure out why they are. They have some extra burst of energy right now. Right. I'm not saying that you're going to be jumping up and down the trampoline all the time, but you will. You'll. You'll see a noticeable change in yourself when the levels are optimized. That hey, you know what? I, I'm able to do better than what I was doing 10 days ago, 20 days ago. And is that because, uh, well, and there's two things. One, one, like, like you mentioned, one of the things that, that, that are quote unquote toxins in the body, but it's like, you know, you have a cell that breaks down because it's, you know, old and no longer useful. And those particles have to be flushed out. Yes. So yeah. So they're, they're good, like in theory, because they were a good cell and they did their job, but, they've got to leave. And so, yeah, there, those types of things are are in the way, if you will, of the body's functioning. Um, zombie cells, what we call them zombie cells. Yeah. And so, but so for, since glutathione is so common and it's in, like you described, I can just see it's like it, it's working everywhere. Right. So it's working in your liver. It's working in your brain. It's working maybe differently in those places, but it's working in all those areas. Right. That's right. Um, so is that so why it's so important? The liver. Sorry, is that why it's so important? Because it's it 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 is effective everywhere. Because keep in mind, the chemical reactions in your body is happening every single oh, square yeah. inch in your body, everywhere. Yeah. So there are byproducts everywhere in your body. Everywhere right. there is something that we get rid of it, and liver is just one organ that everything goes to the liver. And you clean up the, and you basically filter the blood out right. and try to remove all the junk out of there, so the fresh blood comes out back to uh, back to the body. Go pick up some more sludge from someplace else and bring it back over here. So right. we have a circulatory system that is constantly moving and bringing all these toxins back to the liver. And so the highest concentration of glutathione is in the liver. But but keep in mind, every cells. Every human cell has glutathione in there. Mm. It's producing in the mitochondria, in the intracellular levels. Without that, 
the cell is actually has no energy to survive. Right. So cell energy is is critical. That's what that's what I'm saying. The first thing people notice is the energy level goes up. It's a subtle energy. It's not a. It's not something jumping up and down the uh, the trampoline, but it's just yeah, it's, subtle energy that that increases. Right. It's not like you just did, did a whole bunch of caffeine. That's right. Yeah. That's but right. it. Does, so does it? Does it? Is it longer lasting? Is it like? Is it like a? Like. Is it is it a roller coaster or is it like okay we're going to go up and as long as I'm taking it I'm going to just I'm going to plateau at a certain point where my body says this is optimal and that's where I'm going to live for a while. Well, yes, it is going to plateau pretty fast. Okay, because it's it's uh, once the once the cellular energy level goes up high, that's the max energy you can have. Right. Anything more than that energy you need, you have to take caffeine or something a stimulant to do something what we call a super physiologic responses of our body. That means more than a body is designed to do, to do yeah. that part, you need some help, right? right. Uh, and and so that's not what glutathione is all about. The glutathione right. is not going to, it's, if you're going to run an Olympic race, it's not going to be enhance your performance. Let me put it this way. So, right, right. <laughs> um, it's not, it's not going to help you win any races, but yeah. it's going to help you win the race, which is the longest race, which is health span. Uh, right. We always talk about lifespan. I want to live to 120 years of age, uh, but the sheer fact that people dread to live past 80 in diseases mm -hmm. stops you from, oh, I don't want to live to 120. God, no. I mean, yeah. How awful would it be? But if I tell you that, hey, you can live to 120, disease-free, full of energy, full set of mind uh, uh, my, uh, uh, neurological responses, and you can do whatever you're doing today. Oh, right. of course, in that case, I I do want to live to 120, right? Right. And so the the health span race is what you need the most energy for. That's what the glutathione is going to provide you that energy. Well, and it's it's funny because I I've, I'm going to top you on that one because I've said this before on on here and I've said this to people that I that I coach and, and in presentations. <laughs> but my goal is to 140. Um, oh, and so I've awesome. got a, I've got a pretty steep one out there, but but I, I I do it with the same intention of like I don't I don't want to be living the last twenty or thirty years bed bound or house bound because I don't have the energy to go out and do something or I can't physically you know because that's not any that's not going to be any fun um, no. you know it, what I want to do is be able to maybe not do the exact same stuff I'm doing now but be able to have a body that goes out and operates and does the things and and can take the grandkids to Disney and walk around and you know and and do the things that that right now I look forward to in retirement, right? But yeah. I don't want to get to retirement and be like, oh, my body's my body's done. Well, hopefully you'll never retire. Right? Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll I'll never retire. I will yeah. I'll always be doing something every single day. If my passion is in education, yeah. uh what what age do I stop educating right. myself and others, right? Yeah. It, it never never right yeah and so i don't plan to retire ever uh i don't think that's that's in my it's in my bones and it's in right. my dna to retire but at the same time i don't want to be burdened on the, on the society either right i want to be a fully functional human being that is able to do whatever i want to do on my own without any help uh and being a productive member of this uh of the society to help others achieve optimal uh, goals as well and the only right. way they can do it is if they see what i do Right. Mm -hmm. If I tell them what to do, that's one thing. Right. Make more the waistline. But if I tell them what I did, hopefully they'll they'll spark some some interest in other people to follow us. Right. Exactly. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll be right behind you at at one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so, in one of the things that that um, you know your your book, the Glutathione Revolution: Fighting Disease, Slowing Aging, which I think is a really key piece that we're sort of talking about. Um, but increasing energy with the master antioxidant. So the antioxidant piece. Yes. I think a lot of people hear the, it's a buzzword, right? In the health world and in, in, and in marketing for products, you know, it's got, <sighs> it's, it's antioxidant latent. It's got all this, or, you know, and, and I think a lot of people are like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> right. And is it, is it really something I need or is it becoming more of a, it's just a marketing ploy. It's not really important. And yes, yes and no, right? 
Yeah. Uh, so oxidative stress, it happens every single second of your life. It's right. there. So you can avoid it. Um, so sun, so let, let, let's talk about sun rays first. Sun is, is actually really good for you in small doses. Mm-hmm. In large doses, it gives you sunburn and produce a lot more oxidative stress. Right. In low doses, it provides enough energy to actually revive glutathione back, oxidize okay. glutathione back into glutathione, and does all the all the job to reduce oxidative stress. Okay. So low dose is really good for you. High dose is it causes more problems for you. Right. So so it's like everything else, right? In moderation, is everything is going to be good for us in moderation. Right. So. Uh, when I talk about antioxidants, it's, it is a buzzword, right? So glutathione is the mother of all antioxidants. Glutathione, by glutathione, if you look at chemically, is not an antioxidant. It's it's actually a protein. But one of its function is to quench all the excess energy or excess electrons that's revolving in your in, in your body. So it acts like like an antioxidant. Okay. It can also help in some of the detoxification pathways to to be be a catalyst. So it's an enzyme. Uh, it's a protein. I mean, it could be anything you want it to be. It changes. So glutathione is is known for what it does, right? More than what it it, it is. Okay. So, so that's why the term ant- mother wall antioxidant comes in because your body produce, does, doesn't produce vitamin C, doesn't produce any other right. antioxidants other than glutathione. And so the most powerful antioxidant that you have that can work the best for your body is glutathione. The toughest part you said earlier is it's in your brains and it's, it's in your liver everywhere. The toughest part is how do I improve the brain levels of glutathione? That is the right. hardest thing. Okay, because what the, is that because of the blood brain barrier and trying to get it through? Is that absolutely it it's the glutathione is a very large molecule and it's hard enough to uh to get into your bloodstream. Mm-hmm. It's it's even harder to get to cross the blood brain barrier. Okay. So all the therapies that's out in the market today, uh, we we talk about all, all these different technology products that that's out there to support glutathione uh, supplementation, every one of them. Uh, will may improve the total glutathione level in the in the whole blood, mm-hmm. but it only stays in the plasma, never enters the blood cells, the the red blood cells, except for if you're taking some amino acids like cysteines or glutamine or glycines. If you take amino acids, the body will take those amino acids and improve your glutathione levels. Okay. So that has been that that has been proven and it's very effective. In fact, we have an FDA approved medication available in the market. For I don't know twenty plus years now, thirty years. Okay. So it's it's already been out there, but again, it's depending on your body's ability to produce glutathione. Okay, and so you really got to be aware of what you're putting in as far as the type. Yeah. Oh yes. Because it, it it sounds like if you it sounds like it could very easily just be something that you take and you just eliminate, and it never actually does any good if your body's not there to ready to absorb it and accept it. Uh, and I would say 95, 99% of the products out there like that. Unfortunately. Really? Wow. Unfortunately. Uh, that's, that is that is what they call as glutathione right, supplementations. Right. You can take amino acids and the body will produce glutathione out of it. So that that's okay. We can eat, eat the foods. There are a lot of supplements that say that this will boost your glutathione levels. And mm-hmm. they do, by the way, because they have amino acids that are necessary for your body to produce your own glutathione. Right, but keep in mind when your needs are now, right? If you tell me that, hey, I need a thousand dollars, and say, hey, oh, oh, sure, absolutely, I have a job for you. If you do this job for three weeks in a row, I'll give you a thousand bucks. Right. I said, I need the money now, not yeah. three weeks from today, right? Right. And so, people they have need of glutathione today, and they are going to be waiting for the amino acids to kick in to for the body to produce glutathione. They may be, they may be. Uh, there's, there's there's some time lag over there, right? Okay, so it sounds like they want they they need to do a, a, a mixture of both. If they if they know they're they're deficient, they need to do a mixture of both until their body can sort of get up to speed and 
and take it on their own. Yeah, absolutely. And so when when we in my book, I did write down uh, 14 days to boost your glutathione levels. And it's a diet plan uh, because I always, always figured out that if you get all your necessary ingredients from the foods you eat, because mm-hmm. you're eating food every, every day anyways, right. might as well food, eat the foods that are right for your body to begin with. Then you don't have to do uh, take eat junk food and then take supplements. It does. It's kind right. of uh, then why eat the food in the first place? I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> right. if you eat the right foods that that helps you boost the glutathione levels uh, and satisfy all your other needs of proteins and carbs mm-hmm. and fats and all of those things, then you got you got the best of all solutions, right? right. And so in my in my book, I, I put a fourteen day plan. I, it's fourteen day sounds catchy and marketing mm-hmm. uh, uh, things because it is it is that, but in reality, that is my. Uh, plan for the last 27 years. That's my diet for the last 27 years. So it's not something I do for 14 days only. I've been doing right. it for at least 27 plus years, not knowing what I was doing 27 years ago, by the way. Yeah. So, because at that time I was I was just just graduated from uh from the pharmacy school locally over here in Southern California. And so I was brand new, new kid out of the school with a passion to educate, but I had no idea, but I had the right uh, habits to begin with, and I, right. I, I had to thank my parents for that because it's because of them I had better habits, not because of I was smarter as a young kid. Right, right. <laughs> well, and and that's a big piece of you know the puzzle is the habits that we that we get and create yeah. with food, whether it's right. whether it's from our parents directly or indirectly because of the, uh, the time load that's that's on people, and so it's not that our parents are are forcing us to have fast food or forcing us to do this way, but it's just the way that society has forced them basically to pay the bills. They don't have time to cook at home. They don't have time to do, you know, the grocery shopping. And so it's, it's get the fast food or get the quick, um, the quick meals, um, which a lot of times are not as well-rounded as what we would like. Right. Um, and, and maybe include other things that, you know, uh, uh, seed oils and things like that that our body doesn't need, and so maybe it's it's inadvertently setting us up for for failure. Um, but so in in looking at like what what types of foods should people be going? Okay, if I'm trying to get my glutathione up just naturally on my own, like what types of foods should be included in like their their normal everyday life? So as I said, the three amino acids, right? Right. Where do you get the most amount of cysteine, glycine, and glutamine? Okay. Uh, and sometimes you also get some enzymes out of the foods as well, like Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts have the enzymes as well as the catalyst selenium to improve the glutathione. It's the probably the best uh, product that can improve the glutathione levels at a very fast pace. Okay. But like everything else, you can't eat too much of it. Four Brazil nuts is probably going to be enough per day. Anything more than that, you can get selenium toxicity. Okay, it's not a good choice to have that. Right. Uh, uh, in the in the book, I have li- I have mentioned all the different uh, uh, foods that have high levels of glutathione, but it's not the glutathione itself that I'm I'm worried about. It's all the substrates, right? Right. So cysteine, you can get a lot of cysteine from whey protein isolates. Okay. Uh, it's all animal source uh, to get the cysteine in there. Uh, so. As much as I would like to have everybody vegan if possible, but we can't get away from getting cysteine from some sort of animal sources. So whey protein isolates is probably one of the better options that's out there. Okay. Uh, then you have all your uh, Brussels sprouts and uh, asparagus and all those all those vegetables that helps us with the other other amino acids and the enzymes that can build the glutathione profile for us. So yeah, it's. I mean, you can just Google it out and tell you what what that what those right. fruits and vegetables are. Uh, but it's it's how do you incorporate not just to improve the glutathione levels, but for overall health. Right. So I always look at it as like, okay, great. This is great for glutathione, but that's not the only thing I need in my body. Right. Sure. Sure. I have another 3,000 plus chemicals in my body. How right. do I support everything of that? So having a full spectrum of vegetables, fruits, vegetables uh, is, is probably going to be the best option. 
as yeah. much raw as possible, as much organic as possible, because that has a most of our dense nutrients inside. Right. Uh, and then chew, because chewing yeah. action is the one that's actually producing the enzyme to digest the food. And if you don't chew properly, uh, you're, not, you're not actually digesting most of the foods. Right. So, um, well, and it's funny because I'm, re- I'm reading a book right now, and that's that's actually what I was reading this morning was like, don't forget to chew your food because of the enzymes <laughs> that are created. And, and you mentioned that, you know, that, that some of those things are a catalyst for other things to happen. Yep. Right. And so it's it's a lot of times it's not just, you know, OK, well, I, I increased this enzyme or this vitamin or this mineral by taking a supplement. But if you didn't know the connecting piece, it, it doesn't really do your body any good. No, it does not. So if you just take, let's say, for example, there are three molecules in glutathione, glutamine, glycine, and cysteine. Cysteine is probably the most scarcely found in your body. Mm-hmm. So let's see if we take glutamine all day long, and people do take glutamine all, all day long to help them with the with, with the gut issues they may have. Mm-hmm. Take glutamine, uh, glutamine all day long, but you don't have enough cysteine, guess what? It's not going to produce any glutathione for you. Right. So having a full spectrum, that's what I say. You cannot just eat uh, kale salad every single day, assuming that you're going to be healthy. Right. Right. You can't do that. Yep. You have to have a full spectrum of greens and yellows and reds and oranges and all the different colors of, 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 of the rainbow to eat your food. Right. Uh, because everything has polyphenols, and these are all complex uh uh, protein molecules that your body is breaking down into various substrates to 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 make the uh, to make a different protein inside, inside a body. So we right. do need all kinds of fruits and vegetables. And so, it, because it does, it brings everybody together, right? Yes, it, it brings okay. everybody together, and now they can all work together to to make you healthier and to be able to provide what your cells need from the inside. Um, you know, and one of the things that that I know you you you've talked about is is beauty from the inside out. Yeah. Right. And so it's like it's not it's not necessarily while some I'm sure there's some skin creams out there that work and in, in, in are, are good for you, but a lot of them are you're missing the boat if you're just putting stuff on to try and get rid of the wrinkles. If you work from the inside with the right, yep. you know, building blocks, you know the the wrinkles will take care of themselves. Okay, so I'll try to answer your question a little bit differently. Is that uh, as a pharmacist, I know what stuff can go through your skin and what does not. Right. Guess what? How much stuff do you think goes through your skin? I mean, I'm sure there's some, but I'm sure there's a lot that people think does and doesn't. Very, very small amount. Yeah. That's why... uh, the concerns are uh, if you, if you, if you use it topically, most of the stuff is not going to be good enough because you can't get a particle size small enough to get through the barriers of okay. the skin, right? Okay. Uh, the, uh, most of the most of the creams that are out there are are fat soluble or lipid soluble, right. right? Because skin is full of fat, so the the way the fat cells work is that. It's by slow diffusion. So if it's something you put on your skin, the fat cells will kind of say, oh, this is something similar to what I have in my cells. So it kind of slowly diffuses from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. And the medication can, I call it medication, but all the ingredients can go down into your skin. Right. But it's a very, very small amount at a very slow pace. Okay. So the real beauty of your skin is based on what's inside our body. Right. Right? If you put the glutathione levels, I can assure you, if you have those eight spots, because we call them liver spots, eight spots, because your liver gets toxic and and we have all the spots on your hands, on your face, everywhere else, you can apply the products over there on where the spots are, or you improve the glutathione levels, improve the liver functions, and the spots just disappears. Okay. So... That's what I'm trying to tell you. The beauty is inside out is yeah. because all this thing is telling me that, hey, there's something else is wrong inside your body, and now it's showing the signs on the outer mirror. Because right. I see the skin as a mirror of what's happening inside our body. Yeah. So if I have spots on my face, I may have spots on my liver, on my heart, mm-hmm. on my spleen, or, or everywhere else. 
And those, I do not see them. So how am I going to get rid of them? Right. So I, I want to make sure people understand that glutathione can be used as uh, not for skin conditions. I, I don't see a skin as a condition. I see skin as a, as a mirror or as an, as a, as an another organ that we have to uh, help revive. But it, it's, it's, it's telling us that there's some place else that needs help and you better optimize the glutathione levels in as fast as possible. Well, and you, you bring up a really good point that made me think because before I got myself on the health journey, um, in, yeah. in, I remember this was probably oh, 15 years ago, but, um, at certain times of the year, I would get eczema really bad, oh. um, which I'm sure a lot of people do. Right. Yep. Um, and you know, go to the doctor and he was like, okay, well, you know, are you going to change this about your diet? That about, you know, I was like, eh, I'm, I'm working up, you know, a corporate job. I don't have time for all this stuff. And even though I knew it, like my degrees in exercise physiology with nutrition background, like I knew all this stuff, but I was, I was, you know, a young 20, 25 year old guy that was like, okay, I'm too, I'm too, I'm invincible. Right. Yep. Um, but then I was like, okay, there's, why am I keep putting this cream on when it, it, it makes it go away, but it comes right back. The steroid cream, right? Like, yeah. And so I'm yeah. like, okay, well, it's, it's solving the itch problem. It's, it's making it go away, but it comes back. I'm like, okay. There, and it made me think, okay, there's something inside that's going on and I've got to address, you know, that allergic response is the way I looked at it. Right. I've got an allergic yeah. response of something that's showing up in the skin. And, but then, you know, and I started changing. And, and of course now I haven't had a breakout in years because I've been following a more healthy way of living in but I never thought about if it's showing up on my skin, where else is it showing up internally? Like that's a scary thought. It is. And and you're lucky that this has showed up someplace, right? Right. A lot of people do not see the subtle inflammation that's happening in the body. Uh, and they go decades, right? Decades before they realize that there's something wrong with them. Yeah. Um, I have I have an example for that one for my wife. Uh, at a very early age of 36, 37, she developed uh, inflammation in, in her knees so bad that she, she couldn't she couldn't she couldn't even walk. Oh, wow. uh, we have a two story house and uh, and we have a staircase that goes about seven eight staircase. There's a platform and then go another seven eight staircase on the second floor. Yep. Uh, and she she has to take hold onto the railings. Just to walk up the eight, seven or eight stairs, rest for a few, and then take up another seven or eight stairs, and she only do that maybe once or twice a day. Yeah, and I mean, it's a very very young age, and of course, uh, I'm not the best treatment for her plan because <laughs> I'm not the uh, I'm not an ortho guy. So she went right. to one of the best orthopedic surgeons, and if you go to orthopedic surgeons, what are they gonna do? They can do surgery on you, right? Right, right. They recommend her to do, oh, this is chronomalacia. You have inflammation in your joints. It's all deformed. And we have to scrape off all this inflammation out. And then, uh, and it says, so is it going to go away? No, no. It's just, we just scrape it off so you can feel better. And then you'll develop, develop again. And then when it happens again, we'll scrape again and again and again. It's like, oh, oh, wait a second. This is not going to help you. Right. So I, behind the scenes, I call one of my doctor friends. I say, hey, uh, my wife's having this issue, but I cannot treat her. Uh, can you call me tonight at this time? And I'll have a pick up the phone on my house number, right? And of course, he called. She picked up the phone. I said, hey, how are you doing? I said, oh, oh, my God, are you suffering these issues? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Hey, let me send you a test kit out to see what your inflammation markers are. Right. But what we found out was she was allergic to milk. And when she stopped the milk, inflammation went away. And she's 50 right now and no surgeries. She's walking just fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she would have had surgery 10 years ago. Right. And it would have healed the problem. So, um, again, not everybody is is lucky enough to have a symptoms like my wife did or you did. A lot of patients may they have mild inflammation the whole life. Right. It's not enough you know, to trigger any diseases right away, but that it's the whole body's inflamed from inside and eventually they get stress, diabetes, hypertension, right. um, cardiac diseases. And once that happens, they are irreversible. And right. they're done. 
right? There's right. nothing, there's, there's no going back to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why I tell all the people, all, all my all my family members, I said, you can wait because that's what that's what you've been told to wait and see. But if you're not doing anything different, that's the definition of insanity, expecting right. different results, doing the same thing over and over, yeah. right? You're not going to get there. So in order to, for you to see a change, you've got to change yourself. And there's a low grade information that happens in your body every single day. Uh, and if you do not control that, it can get out of control. Right. And that out of control inflammation is called is the leading cause of multiple disorders, including as as far as cancer. Right. And so our key is how do we reduce the inflammation down? How do we improve our immune system or immune markers, so to speak? How can we keep our body clean at all times? How can we optimize the glutathione to do all those things? Is that that now you see what my research is? Oh, yeah. Right. So when yeah. I first did my research about uh, 14, 15 years ago, when I first started doing work on, I was actually working on vitamin C and then I was working on glutathione next because I was getting paid to work on vitamin C. Right. And I says, I'll, I'll keep my job because like, I'm getting paid <laughs> to work. Uh, right. But behind the scenes, I was working on my own deal about working on the glutathione. And so uh, that's what we're here today is to share my information of what I learned over the last 15 years on glutathione. Yeah. Well, and you know, it, when you talk about that, I, I, I'm reminded of um, when I first came across glutathione was uh, I have a friend who um, his wife had not been like very, it's just a normal American, right? Normal American diet, normal American lifestyle, not an alcoholic, not anything, but just one night and it was a, ce- I can't remember what the celebration was, but it was a celebration <laughs> night had a couple of drinks of wine and the next morning woke up and was like yellow and like, you know, jaundiced oh. and, and she had acute liver failure, like, you know, and, and all the doctors can say is that, you know, it, well, it, the, the wine just threw your liver overboard. Like it was, it was slowly creeping up, slowly creeping up as far as the toxicity levels. And it was just the last, you know, the camel that struck uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was just those two glasses. And um, they came to me because they were like, we need help to get her healthy enough to be not just on the list for the transplant, but like to live long enough to get a transplant. Um, and, and through researching, like, okay, what are the, that's where I first came across glutathione and, and used it as helping her try and keep her liver detoxing as best as it could. Um, and thankfully she got a transplant. Uh, I want to say it was like two months after that. Um, she was very uh, fortunate, but the the ability of what it can do in your body i mean i've seen it firsthand as to what it can do um if it's optimized if it's optimized like, you're yeah. right you're right and and uh i wish uh, this you said it was 14 15 years ago no this lady that did this was uh like uh 3 years ago oh 3 years ago oh my yeah. gosh i wish i had known that part yeah um and the reason is because uh we have worked with the so the glutathione level needs to be optimized. It has to be intercellular. It has to get into the red blood cells to, in order for right. it to get, get all of all over the body. The current technologies uh, were not able to do that. Even the intravenous form of glutathione does not enter the blood cells. It, it stays in the plasma only right. and never in blood cells. So the the life is kind of short. It's still good. It's not bad, but it's not going to be long. It's not going to be a treatment option for us for long term. Right. So when I first discovered the the, st- uh, the molecule stable in my laboratory uh, 14, 15 years ago, I was on a I, I was in a eureka mode. I said, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. we, we accomplished as a pharmacist to have a stable molecule was 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 a miracle. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't good enough because nobody knew what to do with the stable molecule. Doctors had no idea what to do with it. I, I, as a pharmacist, I said, that was not my job to do clinical trials and, and look at right. clinical outcomes. Uh, but I was forced to do that because nobody else was going to do it. So when I discovered the first molecule 14 years ago, I spent first 12 years to do all the research on my own. Right. That's what the book came out, The Glutathione Revolution, is all the work that I've done over the last 12 years besides launching the product. The right. product was just launched two years ago after I knew what the product was, 
mm-hmm. what, how to use it, how how much to give, how uh, what kind of uh, effects I'm going to see in the patients, and right. so on and so forth. And and one of the chapters in the book talks about uh, one of the guy who's who's in the business of tasting wine every day. Oh yeah, he was a wine taster, right? And sometimes for lunch he would taste fifty champagnes. Fifty. Oh my right? gosh. You you wow. sip it you, you, you sip, sip it, it but still that's a lot and, and you and you spit it out you don't you don't yeah. swallow any of these things but the alcohol gets absorbed through mm-hmm. your buccal membranes immediately right by the fifteenth or twentieth uh, champagne he's already little little woozy right 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 he will go to the bathroom use the, my topical glutathione spray it on uh, and so he put his his whole his whole story in the book that he was able to. Like this, the step of button uh, help uh, reduce the alcohol toxins and not toxins, but I think it was it was more coherent. Right, uh, uh, and he was able to do that day in day out for eight years. Oh wow! And he the reason he had access to this product because he was a, a patient of mine at the pharmacy, and when he came and told me that this is this is what he does for a living, I said, oh my. Uh, why do you have to put your liver through this, all these issues every <laughs> single day? I yeah. said, hey, here's here's this bottle. Use it, right? Yeah. So I give a bottle of the, to try it out. I say, hey, this is my this is my uh, research that I I'm working on right now. He goes, uh, he's oh, absolutely good. I love glutathione. I'll use it every day, and so he's been using it uh, for a very long time right now. Yeah, and and he was able to keep his day job all the time until he retired at the age of 70 some he retired about oh, two wow. years ago yeah so he he was using until the day he retired and even mm-hmm. till today's day he still come picks up every other month he'll come by and pick up his supply from, from us that's amazing uh, so it, it is such an amazing thing but when you talk told about the the liver transplant patients liver is one of those organs that can regenerate cells uh, even if it's 70% more damaged Oh yeah. So there's a very good potential that if you have optimized op- optimized glutathione level, it can help glu- the glutathione can help regenerate liver cells again. Uh, again, it's if it's too far gone, if it's on a sure. transplant list, it's probably over 95 percent damage already. Right. Um, I don't think so. We would ever able to survive that uh, liver, but at the same time, there's always a hope that if we can optimize the glutathione levels to a point where it's it was, where it's improving red blood cells levels, there's a good potential that can, we, even if the liver, liver doesn't get available for a year or two, right. that we can keep this person alive and healthy. Right. And that's, I mean, that's really the key. Is it like how, how long, like from the aging standpoint and the longevity standpoint, you know, we, we've all made mistakes, you know, with our, with our health and in, in what we've eaten or what we've drink, you know, it, what we've exposed ourselves to, like we've all made mistakes. And so it's, how do we, once we come to realize, okay, there's, there's, there's things I, I need to change and there's things I need to address. Um, whether it's because the doctors told us that we need to do it or because we just, we, we heard it on a podcast or we heard it, you know, we read it in a book or we saw something. We're like, okay, I'm doing something wrong and I need to change it. It, it sounds like glutathione is, is, is a key piece of that puzzle of you need to optimize this to be able to, to it minimally give yourself the best chance to increase that aging piece. That's right. And the, the question that I get asked all the time is that, uh, is it too late for me to start glutathione? Right? What's yeah. what's the prime age to start? Uh, right. And if I'm already 70 uh, or 80, can mm-hmm. I still can I still start today for the first time? Right. Uh, and so I'll tell you a story about my dad. Uh, fascinating story because he's 80, 70 years old. His birthday is coming up next month. Uh, so he'll be celebrating his birthday in India. He's traveling the world right now. Uh, oh, nice. He's a solo traveler. Uh, he's 87. He lives by himself in India uh, when he goes on vacation because mm-hmm. uh, uh, otherwise he'll be living with us when he comes back to the United States. But right now he's, for the four months, he'll be by himself in India. Right. Uh, he walks six miles per day. Oh, wow. Uh, He's taking maybe about three or four different medications uh, mm-hmm. to stay healthy, but that's about it. Takes about another four or five vitamins. Uh, eats healthy, does his breathing yoga every morning, mm-hmm. and that's his routine. And then he walks and does everything. He does his grocery shopping. He gets his foods. He cuts his own fruits and vegetables, and he eats it. That's what that's what he does by himself right now. Yeah. So that's eighty-seven. 
Right. Uh, 40 years ago, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Because of that, he got blood pressure issues. Mm -hmm. And after that, uncontrolled, he got arthritis. Right. Trifecta, right? Yep. So yep. he had this disease. Uh, all these things, they just, these are un incurable, all never go away. Uh, and at the age of 87 today, uh, he doesn't have arthritis. Right. His type 2 diabetes, he hasn't had, his he has A1C has not gone past 5.5, 5.7 in at least 10 years. Oh, wow. Uh, blood pressure is completely normal. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets his routine EKG checkup uh, once a year, and right. his heart is completely functioning fine. Uh, and he was my patient number one nine years ago on glutathione. Oh, wow. So the day I discovered it, uh, yeah. I felt comfortable that I should be started giving to uh, to my patients. My dad was my first patient. Yeah. And he's been using it ever since. And so is my research partner uh, in crime. He's a PhD that that, that works with me. Yeah. He's, he, he's been using it every single day. He's 65 plus right now. He doesn't have blood pressure issues himself either. Uh, he goes for routine checkup to his doctors all the time. He's still getting broken capillaries in his eyes. And I guess all red once in a while mm -hmm. because of broken capillaries because of too much blood pressure. Right. And he hasn't had broken capillaries for at least five or seven years that I know of as of right now. Wow. And so... Uh, I, I'm not sure what age is too late for you to start, but I'm, mm -hmm. I just told you that at, at the age of 75, it was not too late for him to start. Right. At the age of 87 today, uh, well, age of, no, so age of 78, he started. At the age of 87, he's still fully functioning. And if in fact, he's in better health today than he was at 70. Well, it sounds like he was better health than he was 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he was in. He, he was an athlete, so he had all this. He could have every single thing. Yeah. He was a little fat, um, you know. I say fat, but he's chubby. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it's just it's just one of those things that we have all done mistakes in our life. Right. And by the way, we still make mistakes today. Oh yeah. Right. right? I have kids, and the kids also go. I want to eat, go to ice cream. Absolutely, I'm going to have enjoy ice cream with you. Right. I, I know it's not good for me. Right. I know the fact, but I'm still going to enjoy ice cream with my kids. Yeah. Right. And so we still make mistakes today, but that's not stopping me from optimizing whatever possible things I have in my arsenal. I'm going to optimize it. Then. There was a research done uh, for all the centurions. All centurions across the board has the highest level of glutathione levels that they've ever seen. Really? Yes. Wow. And so, I mean, it's things like that. So, you know, yes, we want to study the centurions. They, they're not guinea pigs by all means, right? right? Right, but uh, they do do the testings, and when they do the testings, uh, uh, we get to measure all kinds of other things too. To what 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 do they have? What kind of lifestyle they have? What kind of fruits and vegetables they eat? Uh, right. What what is the mix up in the body that's 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 allowing them to sustain this long? Right, and so well, and most of them, uh, you know, especially when you look at the blue zones. I mean, most of them, their diet does consist of a lot of fruits and vegetables, and yep. and it's not just it's, it, it, you know, it's the compounding effect. And it sounds like it's exactly what they needed for glutathione to be optimized is that it's not just that they eat fruits and vegetables now that they're yeah. 85, 90, 100 years old. They it's they've been doing it all their life. And so it's that That's compounding right. effect all the way through. Um, and it sounds like if if they had, which I'm sure some of them, they, you know, obviously there's going to be a decrease of glutathione from when you're at, at younger to when you're older because aging but it sounds like the decrease was probably at a much less rapid pace than the rest of us are experiencing. And, and that could be true because on the blue zones, one thing they do emphasize is they do a lot of de-stressing uh, work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a one blue zone right down the street from, from us over here in Loma Linda. Right. Uh, and so they have a lot of de-stressors, uh, uh, exercise that they do. They have completely off their devices on the weekends. Uh, they do a lot of different things that can help them to slow the body down so they're not firing up all the time with all the chemical right. reactions. So right. the oxidative stress is reduced by by your body not, you're not demanding a lot of your body to do additional things. Right. Uh, and so that could be one of the things. 
there's another blue zone up in, in up in Italy, up on the mountains mm-hmm. uh, that I that I was studying as well. And over there, even a 95 year old is a farmer uh, in the field plowing and, and 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 doing crops and eating those fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Yep. I mean, these are these are functional members of the society. And and up in the mountains, there's no. Uh, noise pollution, electronic pollution oh, yeah. that's out there. So I think there's a lot more for us to learn from these blue zones as to is it just the is it just the glutathione levels? I hope not. It's right. the whole lifestyle. It's the whole yeah. lifestyle that they have adopted that's allowing them to 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 stay forever. Right. Well, and that's uh, goals not forever, but I, hopefully I'll I'll see you over a hundred. <laughs> uh in, in several so in, in several decades um but so i want to be respectful of your time I, this has been a great conversation and i appreciate it so much what uh if somebody you know wanted to get in, uh, in touch with you um you know how could they do that how do they follow you how can they get your oh. book all those types of things um so the book is available at, at all the major online or in store bookstores have those right. uh, i have them on my website as well the aurowellness.com a u r o wellness.com i do have the book over there as well for sale uh there's an audio book as well kindle so if it, everybody listens to it differently, right? Sure. Reads, listens. Some people like hard books. Some people like Kindle books. So right. Whatever it is, whatever your your favorite way to get the information, it's available today. It's out there. Okay, it's out there today. Uh, best way to get hold of me is through the website. It's info at oralwellness.com. It goes straight into uh, the uh, the person that checks all my emails and if it's something that addressed to me directly she just forwards it to me directly cool. so it's 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 uh it's just one step away from uh from getting hold of me directly awesome well thank you so much and i'm going to link that uh the connection to your website and uh to the book in the show notes so people can just click a link and get to it hopefully um and and learn more about you know how like how to take care of yourself and how to control a little bit more of your aging process as you age. Cause I think that's an, an important piece of it. Um, I'll leave it with, with this one last thought that the reason I do all this thing is because uh, I want to make sure that if I'm going to live to 120, I want everybody that I care about wants to be there with me because right. it's, it's very lonely up there when you're by yourself at the age of 120 and no, none of your friends that you care about are there with you. Right. And so I hope that you can spread spread this word to everybody. And so when we are out there 120 or 140 in your case, that all the people that you care about are there with us. Yep. That's great. Thank you so much, Dr. Patel. Thank you. <laughs>